married to a farmer in the south of Sweden. Can you imagine me as a farmer's wife? Ingmar called me in and said, I'm sending you a script, read it, and call me. And the script of Through a Glass Darkly came, and I read it, and I thought, oh. So I called him and I said, Ingmar, I read it and I think it's fantastic, but I must say, it's too difficult for me. And he said, Prata inte skit, as he always <laughs> said. Do. And we start then and then and then, and you have to come up and so on. And that was the first film he made at Fore. The island he then made a lot of films, and where he stayed, he built a big house, you know, and so on. He and Sven Nyqvist, one of those fantastic photographers, uh, they went down there and looked at it and so on. So we went down for, I don't remember if we were there three weeks or something for the exterior. And then we made in a wreck. Yeah. And, and uh, was lying, you know, outside the island that we were. And um, so we had that for the exteriors. And then they had built it inside in the studio. And, you know, it was rotten water and it stank. And, but it was a fantastic thing to be in, you know, with dropping water and everything. That is where she raped her little brother. Karin. Karin. Det är jag, Karin. It was so fantastic with this. I was so happy. I think it was the most, one of the happiest times in my life with this very, very sick woman, you know, screaming and seeing big spiders and all those that, you know, and that. But when I left, you know, the studio, I had a room with a skit girl and her mother. Her mother made us dinner. I went to bed, I read my life, I slept like a little child. Happy to come back, you know, next day, next day, next day, with all my friends, you know, that I have been working with. I must say, we didn't take many takes, you know. Ima is not the kind of director who takes and takes and takes, but he's not the type, you know. There are some directors who, you know, they can go on to ten and more, just because they want to have something to play with in the cutting room, and I hate that. <laughs> and they can't even explain. I mean, if you have to take more takes because of a technical uh, something with the camera or so on, you know, something is wrong, uh, then it's okay. But not, you know, they shall not use us as puppet on a string. I think that's not nice. But is it, are you freer the first take usually? Yourself? Uh, yes, in a way. More instinctive? Yeah, the first, the first and second. After that, I feel a little. I, I can't explain, I feel not stiff, but in a way, you know, I thought, oh, what do I have to do now that is uh, change it or, but uh, when the camera starts, I start. Most of the photographers are so sweet and kind, and I mean, Sven especially, he never say a uh, bad word on anything, you know, and he was very quiet and he just went like this, you know, and say, and man lamp there, and, and uh, Ingmar became a little nicer in a way, I mean, even when they were talking, you know, he, he liked Sven very much, um, but I mean, Sven made a lot for Ingmar, I think, really, really, really. What did you draw on to play this woman who has great knowledge, she knows a lot, but she's also losing her mind? 
Where did you go for that kind of darkness and despair? I mean, she's such an extreme character. Yeah, it was it was written very good. But Ingmar also told me to call a, a professor in Helsingborg at uh, I had a sinus for cubes at uh, mental hospital. Mental hospital, and um, so I. Um, I called his nurse and I said, my name is so and so and I would like to meet professor and, um, and, and I'm not sick, I said, mm -hmm, she said. I said, but what is happening when, when they hear the voices inside, you know, the head and everything, do they make faces or do they, you know? And he said, no, I just don't see anything on the face. Even if they hear, you know, to, uh, to my God, how, how to, f to, to feel them and to show what happened inside the head, in the brain. But um, I think it came out rather well. And it was funny, it was very, very funny, you know, to do these things. And Gud stiger ner från berg. Han går genom den mörka skogen. Överallt rodjuren i tystnaden och mörkret. Det måste vara verklighet. Jag drömmer ju inte. Jag talar ju sanning. Jag finns än i den ena världen och än i den andra. Jag kan inte hindra det. When she's talking uh, in the attic, um, it's a long, 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 long dialogue. And I hear my stomach, <laughs> So I looked and, and started on again, and so on, and, you know, finished the scene. And I said, did you hear my stomach? Yeah, but it doesn't matter, saying, it doesn't matter, it was good. We take it, don't care about your stomach, your damn stomach. <laughs> he said, no, but, no, but yeah, I don't know if you can understand how, how fantastic it is to, to get the opportunity to do those things. You know, you get the fantastic part. And after that, after five o'clock, you are the happiest girl in town.